It was the year of 1902 when Maria Zenobia Izquierdo, better known as Maria Izquierdo, Mexican contemporary artist, was born in San Juan de los Lagos, Jalisco, Mexico. She was raised by her grandmother and her aunt, who made sure that the little Maria never missed a day at church. Her grandmother and her aunt's religious background influenced Maria's paintings. When she was 14, she was married off to an older army colonel and had three children with him. The family moved to Mexico City in 1923, and soon after, Maria started to attend a school of painting and sculpture. At the age of 25, she divorced her husband and took her children and began to study full-time at La Escuela Nacional de Bellas Artes. When she arrived to La Escuela Nacional de Bellas Artes, Diego Rivera, the great muralist Mexican painter, was the director of the school. He took notice of her. He even stated that she was the only worthy student of his. This only caused jealousy amongst the rest of the students. This proved to be too difficult for Maria Izquierdo to handle. She left the academy and moved in with Rufino Tamayo. In those four years, Rufino Tamayo taught Maria Izquierdo the art of watercolor, both of them believing that painting should be poetic through surrealism and still art, created some of the most beautiful masterpieces. During that time period that she lived with Tamayo, in 1929, Rivera arranged an exhibition for Maria. In that exhibition, Maria was finally introduced to the world, part of it, New York and France. And in 1930, she was the first Mexican woman artist to have a solo exhibition at the New York Art Center. That same year, she was included in a Mexican painter's exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City in 1931 at the Museum of Modern Art. In the 1930s, she became involved in feminist groups as well as an avant-garde group that opposed the muralist. This group was known as La Generación de la Ruptura, Breakaway Generation. This group saw her as the true representation of cultural nationalism and they criticized the muralist for using male dominance and power. In 1936, she gained international fame. She went to France and had an exhibit in Paris, France. She also went to San Francisco, California, New York, and Palacio de Bellas Artes in Mexico City. La Liga de Escritores y Artistas Revolucionarios, LEAR, were part of the breakaway generation. This was a very crucial and important period of time in which Maria Izquierdo and these intellectuals were fighting against imperialism and against the established quote that muralists and other artists and politicians had created Mexico into. They were trying to establish nationalism. Being part of this group only proved to hurt Maria Izquierdo later on when she, with Diego Rivera, went head to head for a commission that was given to Maria. In 1945, at the height of her career, the Mexican government commissioned Izquierdo to do a mural in one of Mexico City's buildings. However, Diego Rivera and Siqueiros blocked her from getting the job, stating, she lacks experience. This came from the same person that once said that she was the only worthy student of his. He also stated that she was like her paintings, classically Mexican. This left a great pain in Maria. She began to have nightmares and one night she woke up and drew her dream. It was the year of 1947. This turned out to be one of her last and her greatest paintings, Sueños y Pensamientos. This 
brings me to the painting that I will be talking about today, Sueños y Pensamientos, a painting that embodies Maria Izquierdo's entire life. Robin states in his article, how Izquierdo expresses her nationalism against that of the muralist. Her creation of Sueño y Pensamientos in 1947 Oil on canvas, 45 by 60 centimeters, part of a private collection that currently is in Monterrey, Mexico. Izquierdo painted herself into architecture and landscape to represent the devastation that Mexico had been going through during the 1940s. Izquierdo uses a still art surrealist two-dimensional style to paint this piece of art. We can see the artist is holding her own severed head out of the window. In addition, her own decapitated body is painted several times alongside stumps of trees. This was to show the fate of her artistic life. In this painting, Izquierdo conveyed the message of how, even though her entire life she had fought against the male dominance towards female artists, she was still trapped within that same world. It is a crime to be born a woman with talent. In 1948, Maria suffered a stroke that left her right side paralyzed. She said, if I can't paint with my right, I will train my left and I will paint with my left. She produced 20 more artworks after that, but nothing of the quality of work that she had prior painted. She died on December 3rd of 1955 in Mexico City. She is known and considered as one of the founders of contemporary Mexican art. In 2002, she was named Patrimonio Artístico Nacional and in 2012, the Mexican Congress decided to transfer her remains to La Rotonda de las Personas Ilustres, Panteón Civil de Dolores. Maria Izquierdo leaves us with the responsibility of continuing her work, her work to give women a voice and a place at the table. Thank you.